Welcome, everybody. Next Walkabout Talk About. Um, I'm here with Jesse Shell, the um, founder, owner, I don't know exactly what the best title is, of Shell Games. Um, so I'll let him introduce himself, but let me take my first putt and we'll just kick things off here. Um, I'm Lucas Martel. I'm the creator of Walkabout Mini Golf. So. Ooh, that Ooh, one's not too bad. Good. I've I've All done right. worse. I've I haven't played this course in a really, really long time. <laughs> uh yeah, hi, I'm Jesse Shell. I um I am the CEO of Shell Games. I also teach at Carnegie Mellon University. Um I've been doing VR for a long time. I probably started oh that was not good. That was that was too far <laughs> around. Um I started doing VR probably about 30 years ago and I've been doing it pretty continuously uh, since then. I used to be the creative director of the Disney Virtual Reality Studio. And um, then I came to Carnegie Mellon, started teaching virtual reality there. And uh, so for the last 20 years, I've been making all kinds of games with shell games, but we make games like I Expect You to Die. If you know that, we have the forthcoming uh, Among Us VR. Um, also, Until You Fall, Lost Recipes, a lot of VR games out there. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are are cute, and yeah, I I knew that you had been doing it for a while, but I didn't realize you had been doing it for for thirty years. So, wh what was yep. um? Here, I'll keep I'll go ahead and tap in here. What, yeah, what was the mm -hmm. so the early on the the Disney virtual like what was the um, what sort of stuff were you guys doing more specifically, sort of with all of that program? So in uh, in the nineties, VR was kind of hot, and. Um, there was a big belief that like, hey, this is really gonna matter for theme parks. So Disney mm -hmm. started this virtual reality studio group as part of Disney Imagineering. Okay. And and um, we did a lot of experimental work early on, but then we created a thing called Disney Quest, which was Disney's virtual reality theme park that was open for mm -hmm. about 20 years, about 97 to, to 2016, something like that. Okay. Mm hmm Oh, that's cool. Was that, is that almost sort of a, cause I'm guessing that was all like location based. You actually went to the the location and that, and it was all sort of like in there kind of like currently like the void is sort of doing that or was it, um, did it have a different, yeah, it was, a different way of working? It was that kind of thing. It was like, it was like, it was like a family friendly, various, like really high end arcade experiences. Some of them okay. were head mount based. Like we did the Aladdin's magic carpet ride was head mount based. And mm -hmm. we, uh, there was also um, sort of a sword fighting game that was head mount based. Oh, wow, this is a tricky hole. Fascinating. Let's see. I'm just going to stare. This at is this all for part of my plan. It's sort of like I distract you by making you talk. And then I, uh, very nicely done, though. That's pretty much. Wow. The, the goal on. is to match you, right? Because that's what I was trying to yeah, do. Is that, is that exactly. Works, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, just be right. Mm -hmm, yeah. So my, my evil plan is failing. Yeah, so we had some head mount stuff there, but we also had things that were um, cave based, uh, and mm -hmm. then some other really unusual things using um, like mirrored displays and those sorts of things. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious, just sort of having been in it for so long, are mm -hmm. there a lot of things that you picked up or tricks or just sort of like ways of thinking about stuff that you feel has carried over to like the current gen of VR stuff? Or do you find yourself kind of having to unlearn some of those things that you were doing back in the day? Like have, have things changed so much, I guess is the question. Um, it's some of both. Most things have not changed very much. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny because like you look at the hardware we have now and the hardware we had back in 1990, I don't know, call it 1995, mm -hmm. It's almost the same, like the same number of polygons. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, like so much of it is the same. The difference is everything costs literally one thousand times less. Um, yeah. Like the, you know, we 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 were working. The first system we were working on had a price tag of I think three hundred thousand dollars. And nowadays, of course, everybody's like, oh, we're all using Quest Two, and it costs about three hundred dollars. But it's yeah. seen very <laughs> similar. Uh, very, very similar power. Um, mm -hmm. So, so some things, you know, we're doing it differently. We're doing it with this is with this hole is nuts. Sorry, I just got to get my head around it here. Um, <laughs> I really should have picked. Some, uh, yeah. Oh, what? Ooh, that was a. I think it that went didn't off even the make toe. sense. Yeah, something went <laughs> funny there. Yeah, I, 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 it, I, I hit I the I hit the right. uh, the make him. 
I hit the... Yeah, you... I've got a button that I can just hit whenever you, uh... Yeah, it's sort of like whenever you want the, the pinball machine to tilt a little more than it's supposed to. Well, it... Eat the it, quarter. It clearly works, so, so there's that one. <laughs> I'm gonna try something different here. Well, it's something. Yeah. Um... Anyway, so the... Some things... Some things are the same, some things are... Are, are different. Uh... Definitely, but... Yeah. Um... It... You know, I knew enough that we were able to go into making VR with a lot of confidence because I knew enough stuff that did work well um, that we were able to kind of go in and say, yeah, okay, we know, we know how to make this work. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, that was yeah, cause you're, what I wanted, but I'm halfway there. You guys are also one of the few kind of... I, I mean, there's a, there's a handful of companies that were what I've been calling sort of like that initial wave of, you know, kind of the rift, like the DK2 era, and then even to get into the, like, kind of that early sort of like 2015 era um, VR stuff. But there's a decent yeah. number of, of companies who were almost sort of too early to that, where they were able to build stuff, but it, there just weren't enough users. And unfortunately, a lot of those companies didn't quite make it, but it seems like you guys have, because do you only do VR or do you do a wide mix of stuff currently? So, you know, we, we, our studio has been around for 20 years. And so we've been, mm -hmm. um, we've, we've done a lot of things over, over the years. Currently we're doing a lot of VR because we just had so much success with it. I think at this point we've mm -hmm. shipped something like, uh, I don't know, over 20 VR and AR titles. And um, just because we've, had a lot of success with it um mm -hmm. we've we've been sticking with it oh totally yeah well Oops. and there's Not definitely quite. there's definitely something to that that sort of like it does feel like i mean vr is just such a great place to be especially for um more independent i don't know if you guys are technically because you are technically independent right um yeah Do i you think more than all technically your own stuff and independent uh, well, I guess it's all how you look at it. So we as a studio yeah. have a slightly unusual business model. Um, we don't have investors or anything like that. We, mm -hmm. um, we, I would say for the first 10 years of our existence, we were almost entirely work for hire. Okay. And then for the second 10 years, we gradually started having success with our own stuff. And so at this point, about 50% of what we do is work for hire, you know, making games for other people. Someone will come to us with a project and we'll make it for them. Right. And 50% is we initiate things and self-publish them. Okay. Um, so, but, but since, so we, we think of ourselves as independent because we're not, we're not relying on anybody I mean, else's, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, we're I not mean, owned by another also, company. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And also that's sort of like a, I don't even really like that misnomer or that particular way of looking at things just because it's uh yeah there's a lot of small companies that happen to be mm. doing really cool stuff that happen to have someone you know ties to someone or they have a publisher or something but but yeah it's not exactly the best way to sort of like describe something but uh um but yeah that's also cool to know that actually worked out really nicely whoa i i, I figured power was the was the answer on this whole there's there's definitely a strategy for most holes like when in doubt just sort of wing it and see what happens that's not gonna do it oh oh that was you were robbed on that the whole trip around yeah yeah I, so I so yeah so about that one. so about 50 percent of the stuff that you're doing is original 50 percent of it is work for hire stuff how like yep. so how many projects do you guys typically have going at any given time then Oh, it's a good question. Um, I'll say six to eight is normal for us. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we're typically doing between six and eight games at a time. To, okay. You know, kind of de depending. Yeah. Yeah. And are most of the work for higher ones, are they also at the same sort of like scale, like full, full games basically? Or do, are some of them more experiences or more sort of like... Uh, so Mighty Coconut, we were an animation studio for quite a while. I mean, a lot of the folks are still, we come from that background. But yeah, we did a lot of work for higher stuff and we would do a lot of commercials. And to be honest, the one thing I've kind of half joked because I don't entirely, I, I 
don't really miss doing some of the commercial stuff, but at the same time, there was also something very nice about taking on a project and it was sort of like three, four weeks of work and then you kind of got to ship it and just the cycle of that was really kind of nice sometimes because it allowed you to <laughs> sort of like figure out what works, what doesn't. You, it let you try people out in different roles that sometimes you wouldn't if it was a multi-year massive project sort of thing. So, um, but yeah, are all of yours sort of like the same uh, of a similar scale or do they, do you do have a lot of that smaller stuff too? It's, it's a little bit all over the place. So we have four mm -hmm. main lines of business. Um, we do entertainment games, um, which a lot mm -hmm. of those have been VR for us lately. We do educational mm -hmm. games. Those tend to be a little smaller. We do health games. Okay. Um, but then uh, we also do theme park and museum installations. Okay. And some of those are really big. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of funny. It's, it's sort of... We, we always have a lot of variety in, in what we do. It's part of what's exciting about what we're doing. Like right now we're doing a Hollow Ride game. I don't know if you're familiar with Hollow Ride. That's, I don't, that's well, oh yeah. VR in the, yeah. Oh no, sorry, I think there's a little delay. What, what, what were we saying there? Oh, I was just saying Hollow Ride is this really interesting um, uh, thing that lets you, you be a, you're a passenger in a car doing VR. Okay. Uh, um, it was, it, and that's just a really interesting project that uh, we've been we've been working on. We have making this game called uh, Cloud Breakers that is uh, uh, designed for that. And the idea is in the car, the car is giving um, data to the headset about how the car is moving, and okay. you have a sim you have an experience in the headset that matches exactly what the car is doing. So you don't have mm -hmm. any motion sickness because the car motion and the and the virtual motion match perfectly. Interesting. Yeah. So we end up doing a lot of unusual projects. Um, and that makes a lot of sense too, that that sort of thing would be something like, oh yeah, that's sort of like, that's, that's almost like R and D almost as much as anything else, because I'd imagine there's not like, you know, there's not a massive, massive audience sort of like waiting for that, but it is the sort of thing that like, it could, it could become a thing or it could, you know, just over the course of you know, VR's life cycle that, that maybe that even becomes sort of like a genre. It still feels like a lot of the genres haven't even been invented for VR. Yeah, we've definitely gotten a bit of a reputation as a studio that if you've got some crazy new kind of hardware, um, we'll help you figure out how to make it fun. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, you know, things like, I don't know if you saw the Jedi Challenges lightsaber game that we made. Oh, yeah. that was like a, yeah. that, that was like an AR headset game that you know used this weird AR headset where you stuck a phone into this headset and it worked with a mirror and it came with a tracked lightsaber um, mm -hmm. we, we we've, we've kind of had a reputation for being able to do fun things with technologies that no one's really played with yet and that's that's helped us as a studio because it means people come to us and say, hey, we've got this new thing we invented. You know, can you can you try and make it fun? And you know, we we end up getting paid in order to learn these new technologies that sometimes end up really uh, being very important. You know, so that that's been a good strategy for us. But yeah, I love the sort of the hardware stuff. We had done a thing for the Merge Cube, um, which was this AR cube thing. We did a branching narrative story that you essentially sort of like you chose oh, cool. which path you were taking in the story by turning the cube. One of those things that was super fun though. Oh, that'll work. Maybe. Yeah. I think I stayed in. Nicely done. Yeah. I think I'm just going to try to to match you over there. I'm not going to go for, I'm not going to go for broke. But yeah, it was super fun to just sort of like think about that in the process of just figuring out what worked and what didn't. And then what was fun was was a blast. And yeah, we learned a lot from that that went directly into making making walkabout. So there were a lot of lessons learned on that. What was your what was your favorite sort of like, yeah, of those weird sort of like, oh, new hardware, no sort of unknown things. What's the is there one in particular that sort of that became something really, really cool? Oh man! Well, actually, I mean, I, I would say Jedi Challenges was definitely one of those for us because uh, we learned a ton making it, and it ended up serving as meaningful inspiration for when we did the Until You Fall sword game. 
Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah. Because we we done this augmented reality sword fighting game, and we kept thinking, wow, this really works here. Could we make a VR sword fighting game? But it would be nice if you could do it with two hands. And so that mm-hmm. the the lessons we learned out of Jedi challenges, it was like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna use a different architecture and things, but um, but. But we feel like we understand how to do sword fighting really well now, and that that definitely yeah. got us going on the until you fall. Awesome, yeah, and yeah, it's a that's a particularly challenging one just without the without the interactivity or without the interaction, the physical interaction of like swords clanging together and like a melee sort of thing. So yeah, that's a tough one to solve too. Yeah, yeah. Now we we learned ways to simulate tactile that were um, not obvious. Yeah. It feels like that seems to be a decent bit. Actually, you go first because you won that hole. Um, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of things in VR that sort of like that, yeah, that you think will work that don't tend to work. And sometimes the simplest ones are often the often the most effective. Um, but yeah, it really does take a, a decent bit of trial and error to find all of those. So um, I'm also kind of curious. So you guys have, when does Among Us come out again? I don't remember the release date off the top of my head. November 11. Oh, yes. Yeah, so that's literally right around the corner from now. So, yep. Um, yep. Um, and that's a very big one, very, yeah, highly anticipated one. So we will, uh, we'll sort of um, sign off as we're, uh, as we're battling for, for this final hole here. But, um, but yeah, anything right. else that you want to plug or, or chat about or just anything else that you want uh, folks to know about? Oh boy, let's see. I definitely want people to check out <laughs> Among Us on November 11th. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess I, I would definitely encourage people to just check out anything by Shell Games uh, that's out there in the in the VR space. Uh, the you know the Quest games are of course our best known ones. Um, mm-hmm. We've got our we've got our Lost Recipes cooking game, Until You Fall, our sword fighting game, I Expect You to Die one and two. Um, those are those are all out there. Um, but if for people who are into other platforms like the Rift, we have educational experiences like our HoloLab Champions Chemistry Game and History Makers VR, mm-hmm. and even our uh, uh, for people who do the Vive, we made this Water Bears VR game. So we have a, we have a lot of things that are uh, that are out there. Um, so yeah, uh, but uh, you guys are yeah, yeah you, def- you guys are prolific. I think that. Um, um, I Expect You to Die was one of the early games that I played that really just kind of got me hooked on VR. Ooh, that kind of feels <laughs> like you were robbed a little bit there. I, I feel like I need to apologize for that. Let's see, yeah, I didn't, uh, I think you're gonna take this hole. But yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah, I Expect You to Die was, when did that come out again? Well, the first one, because the second one just came out earlier this year, I know. Well, it's a fun. It's sort of funny the way it happened. Like we 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 dropped the initial level before um, Oculus even really officially released. Before there was even a store, mm-hmm. so we were in the the app. What did they call it? I don't know. The sharing, the share, the app share, whatever that was called. And so right. then the official one came out with the launch of the Oculus, which I guess would have been 20, 2015, 2016, something like that. I, yeah. I can't remember. Okay. But it started with only four levels, and then gradually we added more levels. We added a fifth and a sixth and a seventh. All is free, not even DLC, just like up, updates to the game. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So so we kept updating it until it, we felt like that was, until we felt like we had a full game. And then we moved on, and started working on I Expect You to Die 2, and that was a full game that was uh, that was released. As I might well. actually yeah. now that you say that, I might actually need to go back and replay that because I would have played it on that very first one that shipped, because um, it oh, would have cool. been like that, and the climb would have been like a couple of the ones that I had played like as the very first games, and it would have been that same sort of like era probably. So maybe the version that I played might not have even been the full one. Yeah, no, that could be true. No, it's it's definitely a complete game now, and the sequel is is there as well. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. I'm gonna see if I can get this hole here. Boop. I did it. I thought things well. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jesse, for. Uh... Ooh, I just eked that one out. That was oh, your first no, time you playing did. too. You got that side. I've never done this whole this. Uh, I've never done this course before. It's a nice course. Yeah, yeah. This was the very first one that uh, Henning, our lean course designer, came in and did. So, 
uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us, Jesse. And yeah, just uh, it's super fascinating. Yeah, kind of learn about some of that. Yeah, some of that early on and all that cutting edge stuff that you guys have been working on. So yeah, hope to hope to chat again sometime soon. All right. Thanks so much. Mm-hmm.